What's up guys? And first of all, welcome to everyone that has recently subscribed to my channel. Hope you're enjoying the content. In case you're not aware, I've been using a stock FX8350 inside this rig since I first built it back in 2013 and it held up pretty well so far. Although obviously as time went on, it was slowly starting to show its age. So I thought, why not overclock it? It's an FX chip after all, people push it as far as 4.6 to 4.8 GHz on air. So today we're going to be checking out the performance difference of the FX8350 between stock and overclocked and we'll also talk about whether it is worth spending your time on it at all. If you've been following this channel over the past few months, you probably know that I already upgraded the motherboard as well as the power supply to overclock this system as much as I possibly can because the ones that I had before weren't good enough for overclocking. While at it, I also decided to upgrade my graphics card to the GTX 970, which I believe is one of the best graphics cards alongside the GTX 1060 and RX 570 to pair with the 6 and 8 core FX processors. So if you haven't seen those videos yet, I suggest you watching them first over here before going any further. Alright, so let me quickly show you what we're going to be comparing today. For the stock settings, we have the FX8350 clocked at 4GHz with the Northbridge set to 2200MHz and 8GB of DDR3 1600MHz memory, so basically everything is at stock. Whereas for the overclocked system, we're looking at a 4.675 GHz overclock, just a little below 4.7 GHz, with the north bridge set to 2508 MHz and the RAM at 2128 MHz. I know that my FX8350 can go higher, but unfortunately the CPU cooler that I have and the amount of airflow in my case do not allow me to do that. By the way, I'm not really going to be showing you how I overclocked my CPU in today's video because if I do so, it's going to be hella long. But if you're still rocking an FX processor like I do and would like to see an in-depth overclocking tutorial, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. I will definitely look into it. Alright, starting off, let's check out the performance gains in Cinebench R15. For the single core score, we have a 14% increase, whereas for the multi-core, we're getting a 17% boost, which is around what should be expected for a roughly 17% clock speed increase. Next up, we have Battlefield 5, and at first, you may not notice that big of a difference in FPS until you look at the frame time performance. Not only overclocking the CPU as well as the RAM decreased the amount of stutters as we can see on the graph, but the frame rate also doesn't dip as much under intensive situations such as large explosions, making the gameplay experience much smoother. This is especially noticeable in multiplayer, so if you're looking forward on playing online, I definitely suggest you overclocking your FX processor as well as the RAM to at least 4.5 GHz and 1866 MHz respectively, which are very easy numbers to achieve. Moving on we have GTA 5 and here we can see an up to 10 FPS increase over the stock settings.
Next, we have The Witcher 3, and at first glance, the frame rate seems to be the same most of the time, and you may think that there is absolutely no point of overclocking your processor up until you enter a CPU intensive area such as Novigrad, which I'll show you in a second, where you will definitely notice a difference. Next up we have Watch Dogs 2, which is a very CPU intensive title, and by overclocking our processor, we are able to break the 60fps barrier, with the game becoming much smoother, almost without dipping below 55 frames per second most of the time. Moving on we have Apex Legends, which is a very popular battle royale game right now, and it seems like it doesn't really care about the CPU at all, cause the results are literally the same, and if there is anything to overclock, it would be your graphics card. Finally, I decided to include some render times of a short clip, and by overclocking, we were able to cut down a whole minute, which equals to roughly 16% of time reduction. So if you were to render a much larger project that a stock FX8350 would finish in 20 hours, an overclock of 4.7 GHz would result in around 17 hours of render time. So concluding today's subject, is overclocking an old FX system worth your time and money? Well, it really depends on your situation. Personally, I currently don't have the money to be building a brand new system, which is why I decided to spend some cash to replace a few parts, overclock this rig, and upgrade the graphics card, cause I know that it's still a very capable CPU, and at least for me, mostly gets the job done just fine. So if you're in a similar situation and don't mind spending some cash to upgrade a couple of components to overclock your FX processor, or maybe even already have a decent motherboard, power supply, and cooling, it is definitely worth it, especially if you have an FX8300 or 6300 that have lower frequencies, cause not only you will notice an up to 10 to 20 FPS increase, but also much better frame time performance as we saw in today's video. By the way, talking about FX CPUs, I have upcoming videos of the FX 6300, 4300, as well as much older 6-core Phenom processors, so if you're interested, be sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications down below. Alright, that's going to be it for today's video, I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, be sure to leave a like and feel free to support me on Patreon, link for which I'll leave in the description. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.